Hey guys, RC Anime here. When you're a filmmaker, you'll always find yourself having to go back to the basic rules, whether it be abiding the golden ratio, or to the 180 degree rule. Though there's one form that both the filmmaker and audience is always conscious of. Show, don't tell. It seems to be something every storyteller strives to do. Of course, it's important to tell your stories through the visuals whether that be in the framing, movement, or symbolism. Some of the best films utilize this rule to great effect. But this isn't the only, nor is it universally the best way to deliver drama. You could also do this. There's an old joke. Um, two elderly women are at a Catskill Mountain resort, <clears throat> and one of them says, boy, the food at this place is really terrible. The other one says, yeah, I know, and such small portions. Well. That's essentially how I feel about life. Full of loneliness and misery and suffering and unhappiness. And it's all over much too quickly. Sometimes, instead of showing something, it's more dramatic to have the characters just talk about it. In other words, tell, don't show. And it goes like this, I'm paraphrasing. Um, I would never want to belong to any club that would have someone like me for a member. As of taking a note from theater plays, filmmakers like Woody Allen and Aaron Sorkin found theatrics through dialogue-heavy storytelling. You're gonna go through life thinking that girls don't like you because you're a nerd. Letting what each of the characters say It'll be because you're an asshole. play as the dramatic beat. This can also be seen in the anime Katanagatari. A lot of Nisio Isin's work is heavily focused on dialogue. His light novels don't carry a lot of descriptions, so most of what we know about the world comes directly from events the characters tell or refer to. In Katanagatari's case, this is particularly interesting because the Itezori village was not destroyed by an avalanche, as we will later find out. Half the time, what the characters say are either lies, exaggerations, or biased opinions. And it makes it harder to figure out which piece of information being given is reliable. <laughs> Sometimes it's not clear whether if an episode is going to crow the audience or not by subverting expectations, or knowing which characters we should really root for. Now, Katanagatari isn't difficult to understand, but it certainly requires an amount of attention to the details within someone's dialogue. Because you have to listen to what each of the characters say, and how they say it. How does that equate to their actions? This can be done for either comedic or dramatic effect. But what's important is having that duality between what is said and what objectively happens, especially in Togame's case. Because she continuously goes from being deviant, to clumsy, to cunning, and we're never sure how evil she's claimed to be or how good the show seems to portray her as. And her dialogue is really what makes us unsure, because Togame is manipulative, and everything she says normally has ulterior motives. Another strength that telling without showing has is that it leaves everything up to our imagination. When a character talks about a past event without us seeing it, it gives something cryptic to the character, where we can only see the results of what shaped them to be, instead of seeing the change in the process. It has a different effect on the audience. A scene that does this extremely well is the famous Quint scene from Jaws when Quint tells the legend of the Indianapolis. It's just a, three guys sitting in a boat and you're hearing the survivor describe the sinking of his ship and how the sharks tore the crew apart. Didn't see the first shark for about half an hour. Tiger. The difference is that that scene is not actually about the events described. It's about Quint. You know the thing about a shark? He's got lifeless eyes. Black eyes. Like a doll's eyes. 
One of Alfred Hitchcock's philosophies is that the monster you don't see is the one you're afraid of the most. There is an escalation of tension when the character refers back to a moment in their past, and we don't get to see how it unfolded. Compare that to this moment in House of Five Leaves. The unexpected quick flashback not only feels uninspired because of its awkward transition, but also takes us out of a scene we were barely getting used to. And it doesn't give the audience an opportunity to imagine what the scar might have looked like, until a reveal. When you show, it's important to know what the scene's intentions are. If this were in the mood for love, we have to infer the story solely by the character's actions and the compositions, because their emotions are something that aren't simple enough for words. But something like Annie Hall requires a heavy load of dialogue, so we can understand how much of a neurotic Alvy is. Well, I don't know what I did wrong. I mean, I can't believe this. Somewhere she cooled off to me. Is, is, is it something that I did? Never something you do. That's how people are. Of course, both roles are important and essential to any film or anime. It's really all about balance. There are plenty of moments where Katana Gatari goes into a flashback, or uses the pictures to tell something that dialogue can't. It's not necessarily about showing over telling, or vice versa. It's more about finding a nice middle ground, going to each scene with the most fitting approach. And from there, you just have to figure out what to say. Take a breather. Take a breather.